Hello gang, Tattoo Biker here with you. And tonight, I've got four more compelling cryptid reports to share with you. The first one comes from Pennsylvania, where a pair of siblings observe a terrifying cryptid canine. And then, a couple observes a dark, skinny, hairy, bipedal creature, possibly a Bigfoot, in Idaho. And then again, about a year later. And after that, two friends in Ohio observe a bizarre, solid black, wide-eyed quadruped along the roadway. And finally, a witness in Arizona writes in describing a Bigfoot encounter that he had while fishing, and he even sent in a photo that he took of the creature. You don't want to miss this one, so grab your gear and let's ride. <laughs> Number one, dear tattooed biker, I have something that I'd like to share. My little brother and I are from Washington, a little town in Pennsylvania. There isn't really much to do out here. He would be going to college the next year, so I figured I'd do something nice and hang out with him before then. I'm self-employed, so I didn't really have to worry about putting in for vacation or anything. We spent nearly all of the winter playing my old Xbox 360 games, like Halo 3 until the wee morning hours. Now I've been a fan of podcasts and YouTube videos where they talk about paranormal encounters forever, but I had never imagined that I'd have one myself. This was the night before Christmas. It was a picture-perfect Christmas, too. Fresh snow on the ground, all the houses decorated, flickering lights on every roof and an inflatable in every yard. Everyone had the Christmas spirit that year, and I don't think there was one house left undecorated. My little brother wanted to drive around and look at all the houses, so I agreed to drive him around and look at them if that's what he wanted to do. We get all bundled up in our winter clothes and pile into my pickup truck. Me in my big puffy winter coat, toboggan scarf and sweatpants, and him in his full set of under cold gear. I swear the little guy lives at the gym and loves to wear anything that shows off his gains. I even turned on the radio to some Christmas music for some extra spirit. We were just passing the nursing home in a town called The Grove at Washington, and I got this eerie feeling creep up my spine for some reason as we pass. Now I've heard stories from patients who've stayed there, and even from workers who work there. It's just a bad nursing home. They have trouble keeping people because, well, they keep running people off. They have inattentive staff and are way too short-staffed. Maintenance is lacking too, I guess, as stuff is always breaking down. Back in 2020, they had part of the roof fall in and trapped four residents who had to be rescued by firefighters. It was all over the news. Anyway, I digress. Well, we get down to the bottom of the hill and the next thing I know... There's this nine-foot-tall, dark, brown-haired creature that looks like a big, super-buff dogman-looking thing on steroids, and it bolts out from the woods in the middle of the road right in front of us. Its fur is all matted with snow, mud, sticks, and leaves, and it's got this really nasty-looking scar across its face and some smaller, gnarly-looking gashes across its chest. Its eyes are bloodshot and red, and it was baring its teeth. It was growling so loud that we could actually hear it over the radio. Now this thing looks like it's not having a good night. I had to slam on the brakes just to avoid hitting it. I'll tell you what, I felt like all the color in my body drained out, and that my eyes were about to bulge out of my skull the moment I saw this thing. My heart was ready to burst with how fast it was beating. I couldn't do anything but grip the steering wheel. My brother is in the passenger seat, just losing his mind and in absolute hysterics. It was so bad that he was trying to hop in my seat and hug me, as close to me as he could, as if his equally scared big stepsister could do anything. The thing this whole time was just in the middle of the road staring at us. Eventually, it just got bored or whatever. It let out just this horrendous howl that chilled me right to my soul and then it ran off into some nearby backyards and off into the night. 
It easily cleared every fence until we couldn't see it anymore. We both eventually calmed down enough somewhat where we could continue our evening, but the whole time we were afraid of bumping into this thing again. Thanks for reading. Signed, Faith. Number two. Hey, biker. I've had two unexplained sightings, and both happened fairly close together. The first one was around the end of June 2015, witnessed by myself and my girlfriend, just 30 miles east of Shoshone, Idaho, at my new home that I had just moved into that previous May. The old farmhouse had been vacant for a few years. It's surrounded by fields. The closest house was five miles away, and the closest town was 30 miles in either direction. While I was coming home at around 10 p.m. one night, I pulled off the main road and onto the little dirt road leading to my house. At about 20 yards away, I see a skinny, dark, hairy creature on two feet and under six feet tall take a few steps toward the corral, putting its right hand on the top of the corral fence and go over the top. It wasn't jumping, not running. It did it with absolute ease. My girlfriend and I freaked out, but what happened next was the chilling part. The corral or fence is neck or head high to me, and I'm about six feet tall. After this thing went over the top, it ducked below the fence and looked up not once, but twice. I could see its eyes glowing, almost a foot apart. I immediately parked the truck at an angle with the lights facing it, and then I ran 30 yards to get my gun and spotlight. My girlfriend was still in the truck, watching in fear for it to pop its head back up again. And I run back thinking, don't shoot it. What if it's someone just playing a prank? So I fired above the corrals. And after I fired, I could hear, but not see something big, moving further back through all the other corrals. The next morning, I found the spot where it had stood looking over the fence. Two perfect indents were in the weeds, and a trail where it had escaped into the field. The second sighting was on June 7, 2016. I saw it as it walked past my living room window, seen by myself and my teenage daughter. It walked past the window at the same time just past 10 p.m. I ran out within seconds with my shotgun, and I could see nothing. It either has wings or it's invisible. I'm sending this in hopes of figuring out what I'm up against. I'm not after attention, nor do I want people thinking that I'm nuts, but whatever this is, it's real. Thanks, Biker. Signed, George. Number three. Hi, Biker. Back in 2014, I came across something that I had never seen before, and still to this day, I have no idea what it really was. I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was summer, and the evening was hot and sticky. My best friend Kim and I were on our way to Winchester, Ohio. She had been dating a boy, and they had ended up breaking up a few days before. We were going to his house to exchange property, and I was there to make sure everything went smoothly. After we did the exchange, we headed back to my town of Hillsboro. Winchester was like an hour or so away, so by this time it was getting dark. We were out on the back roads, listening to music and just kind of jamming out. We were, I'm assuming, halfway home when we were coming over a hill. Night had fallen by then, and on the left side of the car there was long grass, like super long, even taller than me. As we reached the top of the hill, we see a black figure come out of the long grass. At first, we thought it was some random animal, since we were in the middle of nowhere, but as we got closer, we realized that it wasn't. The figure was down on all fours, crawled on its hands and knees, and I know that if it had stood up, it would have been at least six foot four, maybe even taller. When our headlights hit it, we got a better look, and that's when it turned its head and looked at us. It was completely black and shiny, looking like it had been dipped in tar. Its eyes were round and milky white. 
and its mouth was full of sharp, needle-looking teeth. I remember my blood ran cold, and Kim asked me what it was, but I didn't know. She asked me what we should do, and I had a strange feeling that if we stopped the car, then something bad was going to happen. So I told her to floor it and don't stop. As we got closer, it turned around and went back into the long grass. She and I haven't spoken about it since. Ever since that day, I've been trying to rack my brain to figure out what it was. I've done some research and haven't come up with anything. And I'm just thinking about this thing. Since chills down my spine. Any idea what we saw? Signed, Jill. Number four. Hey, biker. I just saw this creature on August 12th, 2024 at around 6.30 a.m. on the Navajo Reservation. Just as the sun was about to rise above the mountains east of Sayali Lake. I was there to fish and was at a place called The Point on the northeast side of the lake. As I was casting out lures and gazing around while retrieving my lure after a catch, I noticed movement on the left side of my peripheral vision. I stood up and I noticed something reddish with lots of hair. I dropped my rod and got on my knee to get pictures, trying to stay as steady as possible because this thing was about 250 yards away. I had to zoom in all the way and I took several pics as I was watching it walk toward the shore of the lake. I thought it was going to go into the lake, but it stopped in the bushes of sage that are there at least five feet tall. I was the only one out at the lake at the time. I think it might have seen me because where I was, I was clearly visible. Then it just turned around and started to head back into the forest. It made absolutely no sound, but the way it walked wasn't like a person. It took these big strides and seemed like it took just a few steps to go back into the trees. I'd say this thing was at least six to seven feet tall. Those fence posts are usually about the same height as to keep horses and cattle in the field for grazing, but it was a surreal moment for me. And we do have various sightings here in the Chuska Mountains area of the reservation. I sent you the clearest photo that I took, and I wanted to see what you think. Thanks. Signed, Nate. And there it is. All I have for you tonight. Four shocking and real cryptid encounter stories from viewers. So what did you think about these? As always, I'm anxious to hear all of your thoughts and theories, but all I ask is just keep it respectful for the witnesses. And if you have an unexplained encounter or a strange experience that you'd like to share, just send it to the email address in the description and well, your story might just wind up in a future episode. Anyways, thanks so much for riding with me tonight. I really appreciate you. And please, stay curious, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you on down the road a ways. Biker.